Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're working on this John Deere STX38. It's a favorite of a lot of uh, a lot of users actually. It was a decent tractor. The STX38 was made uh, by John Deere from 1989 to 97. Uh, the 89 to 93 models were called uh, well, commonly called yellow decks. They had, strangely enough, yellow decks. <laughs> And 94 to 97, they called them black decks. Uh, it replaced the original deck, or the yellow deck model in 1994. It's considered to be an economy model. It's got a few less features available to it than the yellow decks did. Uh, available in, uh, during those years, in 96 and 97 only, you could get a motorsports edition. So it's got the checkered flag on her, some special badging. The yellow deck versions had a 12 and a half horse Kohler. The black deck versions had a 13 horse Kohler. This one's tired. See the snow on there? Just pushed it in from outside, actually. It is hemorrhaging oil from I don't know where yet. We're gonna find out. See its previous owner put a uh, fuel filter delete in there. <laughs> Hood is not secured because it's broken. There's our Kohler Command 13. The hood is uh, just kind of flopping there, but we're going to give this thing a once over. Needs some, something going on with the steering because this side's relatively straight and this side's out into the rhubarb, so we'll look at that in a bit. The deck is not terrible, terrible. There's a pretty decent sized rot hole back here, but we're going to get into that and fix it eventually. The brake is sticky, makes it very hard to push around. A few other minor differences between the black and yellow. On the yellow decks, this is a toggle switch. This, this one here is the more common push-pull PTO switch for the clutch. There's not a whole lot of other just cosmetic differences other than a sticker package. But uh, anyway... Gonna let this drip off a little bit. My coffee maker's brewing a half, half a pot so far. Once that's uh, poured in my cup, then we can jump into this thing. I'm gonna pull the hood off of this and heave it out in the yard so it's not in our way. We'll get it uh, lifted up on the stand, get some tools gathered and see what we can see. Okay, before we go too far on this tractor, because there's lots of work to be done, uh, we got to make sure it runs. If it doesn't run, the motor's done, it's a parts unit. I'm not going to bother going over everything. So I've got to get it running first. So uh, first thing I did was disconnected the old petrified fuel line off the carburetor. Hard as a rock. Uh, I'm going to replace it anyways. And I drained the fuel tank. So first what came out was uh, this. So the top part of that is fuel and the bottom lava lamp looking kind of stuff. That's water. Lots of it. <laughs> okay. That's what was in there. Uh, we better clean that car out. So we're going to have to do it anyways. So I've already started disconnecting stuff. We just got to pull our air filter cover off, wing nut on the top, another wing nut underneath this uh, paper pleated air filter. I have a new one for it. This is kind of crusty. I already have a new one. I've had this tractor in the uh, in the yard for quite a while now. Uh, I just haven't got to it yet. So let's get uh, let's get that carb off of there. Looks like 7 16 Could be wrong. I think well this one might be metric. Not sure. I looked up serial number and by the serial number this is a 1996 model. That's not 10 mil. Or it's not 7 16ths. It is 10 mil. Uh huh. Those two come off. Breather tube is off. This should slide out of the way. Oh. Got some treats in there. Very flaky stuffs 
Butterflies are moving. Choke is moving, okay. I've seen it before and I'm not gonna get caught again. I'm gonna check, make sure that butterfly, once I have the carb off, I'm gonna make sure the butterfly is actually a solid link to the activator arm. Had it before, it was doing freaky things. You hit it wide open and it would go partially open. It was uh, kind of crazy, kind of kooky. So let's disconnect it off the governor arm here. There's a little nylon clip. You just flip it up out of the way. This rod comes straight out. This should slide off the studs. And then unhook it here. It's kind of a sideways Z bend. See the stuff falling out of there? There's more of it in there. Flaky, powdery stuff. White. Okay. I will rotate that engine by hand to and watch that valve because I can see the intake valve now. I'll watch it, make sure the valve closes, and then I'll blow a blowgun in there and make sure that whatever I can get out comes out. So I'm going to leave this rod hooked up here. That surface looks nice and straight. It does have a gasket on this side. See the rust at the bottom here? Are you seeing? Well, yeah, somewhat. Some rust there. Got some white powdery stuff in there. Come on, focus. There we go. Sounds empty. Nothing's coming out of it. Yeah, well, let's... Uh, Get it spun around. Get the camera spun around. We'll get you on a bench. And tear this thing down. Hold on. Okay, well, I gave her a quick little shot of brake clean and a blowgun and just blew the outside off. Let's see what we got here. Well, there's our bowl vent. It was plugged up. Uh, some carbers have an external bowl vent that allows the air to equalize with the bowl, the fuel in the bowl, lets fuel go into the engine. Gotta make sure those are clear. So once I uh, blew it, I turned it upside down and a bunch of water came out of it. So there was water in this. So we have a, uh, you know what, maybe I'll see if I can get this rod off of here real quick without racking the little nylon grommet. Yeah. Jettison. Okay, so like I was saying before, I've had one where the, the throttle plate was working independently of the lever. <laughs> So this area here, where the uh, the shaft, the throttle shaft is peened over, was actually loose. So that you would give it some throttle, give it throttle, and the butterfly was basically just doing whatever the heck it wanted. So I just got my finger on there now. I'm just making sure that this lever is tight on the shaft, and it is. It's not moving. So that's good. This is our item mixture screw. It is capped. It's restricted on its travel. So I'm going to remove that cap. Gently, maybe, yup, and it's just a flat head underneath it, because I want to remove that. I don't know if it's going to go back on or not, probably not. So let's count where it's at right now, make sure it moves, yeah. There's half, one, half, two and a half and a bit two and a half and a eight two and a half and a bit I am gonna write that down two and a half plus a little uh, maybe an eighth what does that make it two and five eighths yeah two and five eighths two and a half and an eight Okay, let's get that out of there. Because it's going to go in the cleaner. Oh, come on. Oh, crusty. She's crusty. Okay, that'll go in the cleaner. Let's get that bowl off of there. Oh, yeah.
That's definitely going to be a new gasket. Oh boy. I have no idea what this is. Well, I have an idea what this is going to look like. Probably ain't going to be good. Well, actually, it's not that bad. Full of water. Well, this is not that good. <laughs> well, let's get the thing taken apart anyways. There's our float pin. A little sticky. Float in needle. It's a rubber needle. We'll check to see if that needle is in good shape. What I'm looking for is a ring. Let's see if we can get you a close up of it. Oh, yeah. So around that rubber tip there, I'm looking for a ring around it where it's been pressed into the seat. I'm also looking to make sure that the rubber has got you know, a nice angle on it. Like, I don't know if it's like that instead of being bowed in. I don't want it like a, I don't want the edges to be tapered up. I want them in nice straight lines. I don't know if my illustration made sense. Well, not much else going on in there. There's definitely some crusties in there. Good lawn soak in the ultrasonic cleaner will help that. There's no jets to remove. No threaded in emulsion tube. All that stuff is built up inside there. Don't hear anything rattling around in there, so... All right, well, I'm going to go dunk this in the old sonic cleaner. See what shakes out. Okay, the carburetor's all cleaned and put back together. Threw it on the tractor, turned the fuel tap on, and the new fuel filter I installed filled this new fuel line, filled the bowl, and it proceeded to leak right out of the, ga the old gasket on the bowl. So, took the bowl off, put a new gasket on it. <laughs> it's back on there. It's not showing any drippages. So we're good. I'm going to replace this ratty old filter with a new one. These come with a little tiny piece of rubber hose. That's supposed to go in here. It does two things. First, it stops this or helps stop this from collapsing when you run it down with a wing nut. Second thing it does is it creates a seal. Top of this rubber pushes on here and keeps water from dripping straight down that tube in case you get some water. This one, I gotta have to trim this rubber down, I think. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. It all depends on what top edge is here on the chassis. Either that or the rubber on the bottom is very, very tight. Oh, well, that might be it too. Oh, there we go. That's all it is. That seal's very, very tight. So we'll put our rubber piece back on there. I've had to trim them, trim them in the past. There we go. Nice good seal on that. Put our wing nut down. There we are. These are supposed to be quite tight, actually. There we go. And we'll put this back on. Okay, so this will be uh, the first time turning the key on this machine since I've owned it does have oil in it. It's not nice, but it's oil. Got a booster battery hooked up and ready to go. Before I start it, I want to pop you out of the stand there. Unplug all kinds of cords here. Hang on a second. So that's out. What I've done is I took brake clean. Remember that hemorrhaging oil problem? Wasn't sure whether it was going to be the bottom of the engine crankcase or something underneath the, the engine. So what I did was I used brake clean and a blowgun and I cleaned everything underneath here because I could see oil. Let's get a light in there. Hopefully it doesn't wash the camera all out. Of course it does. Anyways, you can see there's a bolt there. There's one there. There's actually one behind it. There's three bolts that hold a little plate on there. Let me get you a shot of that plate. 
without washing it. There you go. So that bolt, that bolt, and there's another one down on the back there. You can't really see it, but it's down the back. That holds that little plate on there, that metal plate. Come on, focus, behave yourself. That metal plate is the oil pump cover, and there's an O-ring underneath it. So what, uh, I made sure the oil was topped up, and I just let it sit. I brake cleaned it so it was nice and dry. Shot it with the, brake, the uh, blowgun so it was perfectly dry. And after a while, I could see that plate is getting wet. So there's my oil leak. We're going to get it running. Anyways, I have to order that O-ring because it's not just a round O-ring that's got a shape to it. And we'll have to pull the motor off to change it. But let's see if it runs first. I'll get you back in the stand. Hang on. It's been a couple more minutes. Carb's still not leaking, so that's good. Got my battery figured out. Let's make sure the blades are off. I'm not sure if all the safety is working on this thing. So clutch is off. So it should start. I've got the clutch pedal on the far side pushed down and locked down. It's got a little lock here. Well, let's see what happens. Give her some choke. These are interesting. Got to reach way over here. Contact. That's not a good sign. That's popping real hard. I think she's got a blown head gasket. Uh-oh. Gotta get a couple of screws off of here. We should be able to pull that inspection cover off and have a look, see what's going on. Well, that's an outer cover. The inner cover is still there. What I am gonna do so I'm going to pull the spark plug out. I'm going to put my cylinder leak down tester in it. I'm going to see if I can hear air coming out of somewhere. Don't necessarily need to have a leak down tester. I just need to pressurize the cylinder and see where the air is coming from. But if you do it with a tester, like this one, it restricts the amount of air that's going through. We don't need to have 120 pounds going in that cylinder. We just need some. I should have shut the compressor off because it might kick on. Let's see what happens here. Let me shut the compressor off. Hmm. I can feel it under there. Not sure if it's the head gasket or exhaust you can't see very much oh boy I do have a little inspection here let me see if i can see what's going on there a little mirror under there see if i can see anything oh yeah head gas gets blown <laughs> yep i can see it Definitely will not be able to get you guys in there, but I can see a void. The two uh, surfaces, so the cylinder head and the cylinder, the block, the two surfaces where they meet, I can see gasket all the way along the edge and then nothing for about half an inch. And then I can see gasket again. So I think that chunk of gasket's blown out. Well, that's just awesome. I better have a general once over on the rest of this tractor to see if it's worth putting that time into. I mean, it's not a big deal. Head gasket's a head gasket. I've done lots of them and they're not that hard to do. It's the time because I still got to pull the motor and fix that oil leak. And there's still no guarantee that it runs. Even after I do the head gasket and the oil pump O-ring, oil pump cover O-ring, there's no guarantee the transmission's any good. I know there's a rot, one rot hole in the deck, but it might need all new bearings too. I'm going to do that off camera. I'm going to, uh, yeah, I've decided I'm, I'm going to give the whole tractor a once over. So I have all my ducks in a row and I know if it's worth putting this time and effort into this machine. So let me spend a few minutes doing that and I'll turn the camera back on. A decision has been made. 
I'm not sure if it's the right one. Dex rotted, I gotta fix it. Still got that oil leak. <laughs> I don't know. But in the end of the day, it's still a John Deere. They, uh, they're desirable, people want them, and they're a decent machine. So the decision is I'm going to investigate. I'm gonna pull the head off and I'll have a look and see what's going on in there. If there's damage on the head, if there's damage in the cylinder, then it'll come to a screeching halt. But at this point, I'm just gonna pull it apart and have a look. It doesn't hurt to have a look. So, uh, I'm probably just going to fast forward through this. Otherwise, it's going to be a 15-part video. But uh, if I come across anything interesting, I'll drop back out of fast forward and talk to you about it. So, let's get on with it. Okay, so we got the cylinder head off. Nothing too crazy in there. Non-adjustable push rods. These colors use hydraulic lifters. This is gonna go in the parts washer. After I scrape it, it's gonna go in the parts washer. Mineral spirits. Ah, got my finger. I think I have a gasket for that. Think to do. Not seeing anything too obnoxious. There's still cross hatch in the cylinder. No real ridge at the top. A ridge will the pistons, uh, the piston rings, the tension on there will eventually wear up in their travel will wear at the top, and it'll leave a ridge. But there's no ridge in this. There's not even a carbon ridge. So that's not bad. And there's their blown head gasket right there. It's about a quarter inch wide and all the way through. Very blown. Let's see if I can get it off of there in one piece. Maybe. I'm going to get it up to the camera. You can see it. It's got to come off anyway. Here we go. Pop nice and easy. Last a little bit anyways. So yeah. That's not supposed to be there. <laughs> what have I got for head gaskets? Uh, Tecumseh overhead valve. Briggs and Stratton. 17 and up. Intec. Two of them. Briggs and Stratton. 14 horse Intec. No, that's not it. Tecumseh Flathead, five horse. No, that's not it. Oh, Kohler. Looks like a Kohler. Yeah, thinking. I think so. Let's get her out of the package. It's kind of important to know, so I order parts today if I need to. I think this is I think this is the one. 
Let's call our part number 12-041-08. Line them up. Look at that. They're like twins. They're exactly the same. Except for this one doesn't have a gaping hole in it. Well, isn't that nice? In stock head gasket. All right. So at this point, I'm going to grab a razor blade. I'm going to scrape this nice and clean. I'm going to take the tins, the front cover, the valve cover, the head, all that stuff has got to go to the other shed where I've got my parts washer and I got to wash some parts. So we'll see how good of a job I do. Okay, so I'm back from the parts washer. I got the cylinder head as clean as I'm going to get it. Can't see it, don't matter. <laughs> I got the tins cleaned up and you see them. I wanted to get the grease and crap out of them anyways. It uh, impedes the airflow for cooling. I've got the cylinder head on there with the new gasket. Uh, torqued 15 foot pounds first and then 30 foot pounds doing an alternating pattern, skipping a bolt every time. And uh, yeah, that's that. Still have to order that uh, O-ring for the oil pump cover. And at the same time, I will order a new muffler gasket because this one, she's no good. Well, it's missing, so that's no good. So let's get that on there. I can always change that, put that gasket on later, which is fine. I want to hear if it runs. That's got to go underneath. This might be interesting. Nope, this goes under. And things are bent. Let's see if we can straighten that front a little bit. Okay. Fast forward time.
Okay. What do you think? <laughs> Let's turn that fuel back on, make sure the carb didn't get any kind of junk in the needle, make sure it's not going to overflow on us. Still got oil in it. New head gasket, bolts are torqued, all the trims are back on, all the tins are back on. You should run them with tins on them. That's part of the cooling. Those tins direct the airflow from the flywheel fan. They direct the airflow down over the cylinder and out the bottom. We might get a leak from that muffler. I don't know. Maybe, perhaps. Not seeing any drips from the carb. I think, we'll give her a shot. All right, let's try it. Oh boy. Ready? Choke. Oh, guess I better lock that clutch down again. You know what I should do first is I gotta get all these tools off of here. They're gonna rattle off, hit the floor. Let's get that choke pedal back, or the uh, <laughs> clutch pedal locked down. Okay. Ready? Will it idle? Yes, it does. That rattle you're hearing is a clutch. Shouldn't actually, well, it might be stuck, I'm not sure. It is a clutch. There's no belt on it. I engaged the blades. So it's pulled that clutch in and stopped the rattle. Gonna get some oil burning off the muffler. Runs pretty good, actually. I'm gonna let it idle and burn some of that oil off. Not sure if it's burning oil, it could be doing both. There's so much I can't tell. Oil definitely coming out of that uh, oil pump cover now. That was idle good. Barely any gas in it. Looks like I have to align this throttle. Not actually as smoky as the camera looks. It's like I need to adjust this to get the maximum speed I need out of the engine. Anyways, we'll be back when it's not so smoky.
Okay. This is the next day. Uh, lighting's kind of weird because the sun is low in the sky. It's in the morning and it's blasting under the shop and making everything bright. But uh, anyways, uh, before I start tearing into the engine, I'm going to pull the deck. I'm going to order parts once. So instead of ordering the seals and all the stuff that I need and then having to order more, I'll just check to see if there's anything that I must get from the dealer. Um, so I dropped the deck. It's relatively straightforward on this one. A couple of clips at the back, uh, cotter pins, and cotter pins at the front on the two rods that go to the axle, and the deck drops. The belt's already off, so it'll just slide right out. Just got to watch these arms here that uh, they might get hooked underneath. I've worked on lots of the S STX 38s, lots of them. I, I think this is the fourth one so far, third or fourth. And I've got two more in the yard. This is the only black deck, the, the only black deck I've worked on so far. It's different than the yellow decks. Some things are easier, some things are not easier. Um, but the number one thing that I see wrong with these decks, or you'll see where they'll lift on an angle, or they do crazy things, or they don't lift properly, is this back edge of this lift bracket, there is a spot on here it's a roller. It's got to be sitting on the proper position in the roller. This black deck is a lot easier to get on than the yellow decks. It's very open. So you, can, you slide it in, and when you lift this bracket, this actually engages on the roller. So the black decks are easier to unhook and hook, but they all have the same thing, this, this bracket back here. The phone has gone nonstop today. <laughs> uh, sometimes you'll see these worn right out here. I have just welded up filled it in with weld and ground it smooth and it's actually hard surface then the weld is harder than the original material ever was so but it works pretty good so we're going to leave this this hub actually doesn't seem too bad i thought it was bad it's pretty quiet this one here this idler let's get you in there that's pretty noisy that one's worse so we're gonna change those. How do you like the mic? It's wireless now. Leave me a comment. <laughs> Let me know if my audio is better than it has been. Anyways, uh, these two idlers are toast. If I can get generic sizing idler from my supplier, I will. But what I have to do is take these off and check, measure the inside diameter of the bearing and see if there's one available. This is crunchy. This is just noisy. It's, it, I could probably oil it, but I'll just change it. If I can get generic ones, I will get generic ones. And if I can't, I'll have to order them from the dealer. So that's that. I also noticed that the drive belt is no good on it. It's oil soaked from having all that hemorrhaging oil everywhere. So we'll have to change the drive belt. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do because it's pretty oily under there. Well, when we lift the engine up to uh, get that oil pump plate o-ring back in, uh, I'll wash it then. I'll take the engine outside and I'll just wash it. Get all the oil off the pulley and the clutch and everything. So let's uh, get this out of the way. I should point out that this is a big spring here. There's a giant spring. Well, I just unhooked it. <laughs> but anyways, that is what tensions the belt and it's pretty stiff, so we're gonna give that some loving, give it some attention. A little penetrating oil. Yeah, I'm not seeing any other big rot holes in the deck. It's not very strong uh, compared to the yellow decks. The yellow deck is a much thicker material. So we're gonna probably take this idler right off so we can clean underneath it, put some anti-seize and everything in there. But this is this the tiny spring that holds all the tension on the belt. <laughs> okay. Better see what my phone wants. People that fix things are very, very busy. Phone never stops. But today, unfortunately, it's my own car. Gotta put an axle shaft into the Volkswagen. Volkswagen. <laughs> okay, so we're out of the stand and on a little road trip here. 
<laughs> this is the electric clutch that activates what's well, the PDO clutch and runs the blades. So there's a spacer, this spacer splines to the engine keyway. This goes down in there and that's what spins the pulley. This part has to be stationary to the chassis of the tractor, otherwise it'll spin around and rip all the wiring off. So there's two ways to do it. Uh, these can be mounted either way on this unit, uh, clockwise rotation. This is the lock that stops the top part from rotating. There's a pin that drops down from the bottom of the chassis here. And when you slide your clutch on, you have to make sure that the lock is in place. Now you can see that there's quite a bit of wear on this one. That would be a non-used one. There's quite a bit of wear on this. It's still perfectly fine. It'll work. No problem. It'll move a little bit. It'll rattle, but it'll work. The important thing to check, anybody with an STX, I'm sure others, but anything with electric PTO is the pin. So this is the locating rod. It drops down from the top. Now, I'm trying to get a shot. I'm laying under the tractor here. Can you see the wear on that? Look how thin that is. <laughs> There's like no material there. <laughs> so anyway, in the past on one of the tractors, one of the STXs, I took this whole bracket off and I put it on the bench and I welded that together. I built it all up with weld and it worked just fine. But there's this massive spring here. And let me tell you, that sucker was an animal to get on and off. And it is attached to the bracket. So I ain't taking it off. Nope, not going to do it. I'll get underneath here with a welder and I'll just fill this up as I need to. Grind it if I have to. But I'm not taking it off the tractor. Not doing that one again. It's about a 72 mile long belt that runs in here. It's old and poopy. It's going to get a new one. But yeah, I have to clean some of that crap out of there. Pretty oily. Anyways, I wanted to show you that. That's an important thing to check. Uh, can lead to an expensive repair if you start ripping wires out of your clutch. Here, 300 bucks ish in that area so yeah that's that i've gone through the tedious process of locating the pulleys and stuff that i need for the deck i'm just going to replace them i put some oil in it one was a little bit noisy and i put some oil in it made it better but it didn't make it right so we're just going to replace the pulleys john deere sure is proud of those parts man holy smokes that little pulley we're looking for $56 plus tax for those. Yeah, no thanks. I got it from one of my suppliers. A lot less than that. All right, so I got to run. <laughs> Project's on hold. I got to fix the wife's car. So I'll be back when I'm done that.